Good morning, everybody. Just to get us started today, I wanted to show you the latest update from the European model on the next 10 days of total accumulated precipitation anomalies or differences from normal. We're going to be in this new pattern as we move through the middle part of May and, and toward the third and even the beginning of the fourth week of May that is largely dominated by much weaker flow across the country, deeper troughs that are anchored around between you know uh, Hudson Bay and Greenland and a broader ridge that's over the western United States. And as we've been talking about so much lately, this is going to produce flow that's going to come across the country like this as it wraps into this broader low. And as a result, it's giving us a very interesting precipitation pattern. It's pressing more drier air through the midsection of the country. And uh, we're going to watch for a lot of these storms to kind of fire up here, some of them being upslope from the east. Uh, coming uh, from the uh, backside of these high pressure cells, but then more scattered and isolated events down here in parts of the southeast. We are watching out today across this region for some severe weather. I'll show you that in a few moments. But this map really kind of illustrates how important the recent rain is because had all that rain not come through in the last 10 days, uh, and we missed that, this would have really caused major drought expansion across places that have been dry uh, since last fall. So this morning, we continued to watch rain uh, early this morning move out. In fact, we should have a new update here. Uh, we should continue to watch rain. There we go. Move throughout uh, parts of Illinois. Very light rain moving through here. It's going to move over the Ohio River Valley. But coming out of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri, it's not as though it filled in all of the holes. I mean, I can still identify a lot of areas that have been missed by some of this recent rain. But at least it was another kind of good shot at this. NASA's latest update here on soil moisture uh, it continues to show a shrinking of that area that's been so you know negatively impacted by drought but as we you know step back and look away from this area a lot of isolated convection running up the mountains as we talked about we see that from the last 10 days worth of precip a lot of the northern plains and down into texas and getting into the lower mississippi river valley have been quite wet there are still pockets throughout the eastern corn belt that need more moisture in the month of may we're going to see if we can get some of that toward the end of this month and new england has been very dry uh, during this time period in fact maybe an easy way to look at that would go to the last 14 days of uh, precipitation anomalies so we're now just kind of i guess i would call it freckled throughout the midsection of the country and these are the uh, kind of unfortunate places where uh, the moisture missed with some of those bigger storms but you do notice kind of a broader, drier signal throughout much of the, um, you know, much of the East Coast. We're going to be a bit corrective on that here in the near term with um, this region, with some of the storms today as this front sags through. And we're going to watch for better storms coming into parts of the southeast. But New England is going to be kind of our longest holdout for the driest weather outside of our major desert regions uh, in the western part of the United States. Now, for a moment here, I want to transition north of the 49th. And let's go up here to Canada. And I want to show you some, uh, excuse me, some salad imagery from yesterday. What you've got here is just a tremendous amount of wildfire smoke coming out of British Columbia. <clears throat> excuse me, going into, um, you know, here into parts of Alberta and over into Saskatchewan and, and Manitoba. And just to see the extent of that smoke so early in the season, it's just an indicator of the, kind of the extent of the, of the dryness in parts of, uh, in parts of Canada here. And the smoke has moved, as you see here, let me take you back to yesterday, all the way across you know, the rest of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, getting into Ontario. And what's interesting is we can kind of use the smoke as a tracer for what this atmosphere, atmospheric pattern is up to. So I'm going to go to one of my favorite sites. I'm going to use the RAP model to run a smoke uh, forecast, and it looks something like this. So this is what I'm watching. You see how there's a little curl here, but then this kind of deeper dive in the smoke pattern right there. This is just showing us what the uh, mid-level winds are up to. And there's still a larger ridge over the west, but the smoke is tracing out the pattern of this little wave that's sneaking through here and its associated front. And then the drier air that's coming in on the back side of this, pushing through the Great Lakes into the Midwest and eventually here into New England. And that honestly is the drier air that's giving us this forecast. Okay, so the smoke, um, while revealing of just how terrible these fires are uh, here in this part of Canada, is also kind of tracing out what the pattern's up to. And this is what it looks like in the mid-level winds by the time we get to tomorrow. Now, what's important about this pattern was the fact that the atmosphere cut this trough off, but it still maintained a trough that's here over the Aleutian Islands. So there's broad troughing in this part of the Pacific Ocean, but it's not moving anywhere. It's a closed circulation in both cases. So that means this ridge that's sitting here is kind of a more permanent feature as well. And it goes over the top of this little short wave, I'll show you that in a second, and dives into a trough that's off to the east. So one of the issues is this little guy right here does not have much moisture to work with. 
and therefore it will be bringing in chances for some scattered rain. But overall, there's a drier push and cooler air that's going to come in with this as well. Now, there is still a front today we're going to watch that's lingering right in this area, parts of um, the Appalachian Mountains here, Kentucky, Tennessee, parts of uh, North Carolina, Virginia. And uh, last night, the Storm Prediction Center upgraded this to an enhanced risk of severe storms today. So let's grab a look at it by just starting off at 8 o'clock this morning with our high-res um, uh, NAM model. A little bit of an initialization, excuse me, an initialization issue. There was a bit more rain farther to the north uh, of this, where you see the precip in this area. But we are going to watch throughout the day that rain moving over the Ohio Valley. Scattered showers kind of stretching back through this area into Texas. And then like we've been seeing, once we get into the afternoon hours, the storms pop in the mountains. That's all the speckled kind of green you see here. And then tonight, this is 5 o'clock, getting to 6, 7, and 8. This is all central time zone. But we're going to be watching for the um, for the risk of these severe storms to kind of fire up right here in the Appalachian Mountains. So scattered storms in Virginia, they're going to move over the mountains into the Carolinas and through uh, Georgia tonight. And then into tomorrow morning, it looks like the heaviest rains could go into parts of Virginia. This is early morning uh, tomorrow morning. And I was thinking about this. You know, remember, Virginia was an area that earlier in the year was in drought. We've made a great recovery of that drought here in Virginia. Uh, and some more rain in there is going to be quite helpful. Now, playing into the day on Wednesday, there is the trail in, trailing end of that front that's associated with that load that I just mentioned, uh, this guy right here. But you're going to notice that it's not got a whole lot of moisture to work with. So there are some scattered showers along this, but not much more than that. So there's kind of two frontal boundaries I'm keeping an eye on. The second one is sitting right in through here. And you're going to watch as we play forward that both of them are kind of impeded in their forward movement by this big area of high pressure. So scattered showers and storms here, and they connect along the front that's associated with the low going through Canada. It's going to be pulling a lot of smoke in with it. But later on this week, we're going to see what kind of dry air comes in behind this and how cold that air is going to be. So if we just distill it all down, this was the uh, Zero Z WPC run. This will update in a little bit. For those of you that get my report, you'll be able to see the, the newest uh, map here in just a little while. But some of this rain fell last night, all right? But overall, we see there's a pretty good swath in through here, the Ohio River Valley, getting over to the Appalachian Mountains. It could pick up some decent rains. And then just multiple chances for scattered storms right here in this part of, um, you know, in this part of the plains, getting back into the high plains and, and high desert here of uh, Colorado. That's your next seven days. Okay, to see it kind of play out, let's go to the European model only this morning. So we've watched through here. So there's the frontal boundary moving through in the overnight hours Tuesday into getting to early Wednesday morning. There's that little system that sneaks over like Lake Winnipeg and its weak front. But you, you can now see the two fronts, right? So there's one and there's the other, like this broader view here. So then as we play forward, that system tries to roll in here by early Friday morning, bringing a weekly, you know, a forced front, better rains on the tail end of it here into parts of Oklahoma and Kansas. We desperately need this. And then we still are watching, and the models have kind of flirted with this kind of tropical impulse here. It's not a tropical system, forgive me if that confused you, but there's just its origins here in the Western Atlantic. I'm just keeping an eye on it. Uh, we'll just watch for the rains possibly get into parts of the Carolinas. But as we work our way into Friday and then Saturday, nice blast to some cooler air here. We'll take a look at the frost threat in a few seconds. And then into the weekend, that clears everything out. Now, after that, if I just leave it here on Sunday evening, a lot of scattered and isolated storms throughout the mountains, but the fronts are lined up here. So that's why we see this area still showing up wet, you know, as we get out here toward the end of this next seven day time period. Now, there has been in the models as of late another weak frontal boundary that comes in here. It's all associated with the deeper trough that's located between the Hudson Bay and, and, and Greenland. So there might be a chance for early week showers coming through parts of the upper Midwest. But with that, let's flip this over and just take a look at the probability maps. So the first one here is the probability over the next 10 days of getting less than a half inch. So what I'm thinking about here is given some of the numbers we saw, we still have, what, about 35% of the corn crop to get planted. There will be some opening windows in this section uh, of the country. And on the wetter side of it, this is the probability of getting an inch. So I'm thinking a lot about, the, the, you know, we do have these high plains farmers here uh, that desperately need, you know, as much moisture as they can get, although it's been very wet along the front range as of late. And then uh, also more precipitation coming into the panhandles here. Uh, quite critical. But as we talked about, 
wettest region probably being down here in the southeast uh, overall. Okay, pattern by the time we get into the weekend. We're still here. There's that trough, broader ridge. Here's the little system we saw coming through, but that northwest flow is dry. But as we've been discussing, we think that after about the 24th, there it is, there's the 24th getting into the 25th, the atmosphere wants to come back to southwest flow. See that? And it's not the most ideal setup for a lot of severe weather, but I think that the end of the month of May is going to go back over active because of this flow. So we'll just keep a close eye on that. What's missing is this guy right here. Having a trough over Florida, that's not ideal. I mean, if this for, for severe weather. If this was a big ridge versus a trough, we'd have a whole different discussion here. So we see this for week two. The models are pushing the dryness farther east in week two and returning that moisture, as you see here, across a broader area. And so that's what we're going to watch, the progression of the pattern lending itself back to more storms coming through the midsection of the country. So we need to really take advantage of these next 10 days for those folks that will be drier, that need the dry window to finish you know, planting. So just a couple of points there. Yesterday, we had an in-depth discussion twice about the frost risk, and I want to point out that the newest model runs have kind of eliminated that frost risk outside of high elevation, of course, uh, for the northern plains in the next seven days. But it is still very much going to be an issue here in parts of New England this section of, and these two sections of Michigan. So let's go have a look at it. These are min temperatures starting off this morning, going into Wednesday. You can see the patchy frost here and also right around the Great Lakes. This is Thursday morning. That's going to be a very cold one for much of the interior of New York. This is kind of a late frost event here. And then as we get into Friday morning, we were concerned about the cold that was coming in behind that next system. Well, the timing's changed a bit. It's a bit windier, and now we see a lot of these lows in the 40s rather than getting down there into the mid-30s, which is what we were concerned about. But you notice during this entire forecast, the heat is staying on in the west. In fact, look, go look at these high temperatures here. This is high temperatures now. So this is getting into Wednesday, cold day in New England for that uh, for Wednesday. Thursday, this is the cooler air coming behind that front. <clears throat> Excuse me. Friday, look at the heat coming in here to the Pacific Northwest. Saturday, talking about temperatures trying to crack 100 degrees. Getting into Sunday and Monday. That seven-day total GDD map has really got some high numbers here in like the Columbia Basin, for example, in the Snake River Valley. But we've now seen because of the less, kind of the, the, the more shallow, what am I trying to say? The um, backing off of the colder air that these GDD numbers are starting to come back up in this area. So this will be important for those that are still planting here. Overall, the temperature pattern is, is really mimicking what we discussed at the beginning. The broader ridge over the west through much of the next 10 days, I mean, just keeps the warmer conditions here. And the broader trough between, you know, uh, the Hudson Bay and Greenland, it's got a lot of this area with near normal to cooler than normal temperatures, a lot of cloud cover down here driving the cooler weather into Texas and New Mexico. But as we play forward, overall, we see a lot of early season heat being accumulated throughout the midsection of North America, which will be critical for a lot of the crops uh, that are grown there. Just a quick international update on temperatures, a couple of epicenters of, of really warm conditions over the next 10 days. Big section of Europe getting over into Russia, quite warm. And then, of course, where the ridge is here across the western United States is quite warm. Notice that for fall, we are warm as well in parts of Argentina and Brazil, but very cold still in, um, in uh, Australia. And on the precipitation side, just want to point out the models continue to be wetter than average. This is starting later this week coming through Argentina, clipping parts of southern Brazil. The monsoon has you know, almost stopped uh, in terms of what it can do. Uh, for this time of year. So we're drier into this uh, kind of interior circle of Brazil. Uh, but outside of that, more scattered storms across southern Europe and over in parts of Ukraine, especially west or eastern Ukraine, excuse me. And I'm still not seeing any major red flags showing up for like the Manchurian Plain or the North China Plain in China uh, for the start of this growing season either. So we'll leave it there. Appreciate your attention. We'll talk tomorrow. Thanks.